Hey, greetings and salutations everybody, my name is Axe, and I'm here for a review of the new game Titanfall, which, I mean, if you haven't heard of Titanfall at this point, you might as well be living under a rock. Uh, just to go back to it, Titanfall is a new game by Respawn Entertainment, who were the guys who were behind Call of Duty 4 before the series kind of went downhill, in my opinion. And so, definitely somebody to look out for. It's basically a futuristic first-person shooter with mech combat. So what does Titanfall bring that's new to the table? Well, like many first-person shooters, it's a very fast-paced game, but with a third dimension that you don't get in your average shooter. Between the parkour and the titans and the endless possibilities you can do with all of the map setups and layouts, it's amazing, and I was super skeptical of the mechs before because I'm somebody who really isn't a big fan of mech combat games. In fact, it was to the point of where I almost didn't get Titanfall because I thought that it would be too overpowered, but they add a perfect element of excitement and balance. I mean, Titans and pilots are just as deadly, but in different environments, which I love. The number of weapons you can get is perfectly limited. Too many games, I feel like, give you a bunch of filler crap weapons, and we end up only playing three of them that are good, and it just eliminates that process by giving you the ones that are good, that are all distinct in their each way. Some of them, like the smart pistol, which is so cool, auto locks onto enemies, but I mean, it covers all the bases without overcomplicating things, and every weapon is good in different ways rather than one being incredibly better than another. It's all about finding what your build is as a game should be. But Axe, what about the Titans? Well, there are three different types of Titans you can get in this, two of which you unlock in the campaign. The first one is called the Atlas, which is a medium damage titan. I mean, medium armor does good damage. That's what its core is meant for. It's your all-around safe bet titan. The second one you unlock from beating the Militia campaign is called the Strider, and it's a light armor fast titan, which in my opinion is the best one in the game. I love it. It's underrated. I, I can take out tons of titans with this thing if with the right build in mind. And the third one from completing both the Militia and IMC campaign is called the Ogre, which is a heavy armor tank titan. And this thing is just, if you need something that's not going to fall over, it's your best bet. So all of them great for different builds, great for different things. And between all the different titans, ordnance and weapons and armor, you have so many unique possibilities for what your mechs can become that just feel so distinct to its character. And like I said before, these mechs are not overpowered, they're balanced to pilots. I mean, whereas titans are really strong and built for combat, they're really stuck to the ground in only a few key routes. But pilots are super easy to manage and maneuver, and with all the 3D movement and being able to actually ride the titans and destroy them from up top, it's a pretty equal bet. One of the biggest things to worry about though in a first person shooter, let alone just multiplayer game in general, or the, how are the maps? And let me tell you, you have nothing to worry about with this game. The map design is fantastic and meant to keep the action going without any super explosive adrenaline energy drink moments. I mean, there's chaos and a lot that goes on, but you can manage it very well. And I mean, the, it's just so much fun, especially with the parkour. You can do a lot of cool things. It's just a beautiful, beautiful experience, and you don't have to worry about these guys when it comes to that. But finally, I have been talking about all the amazing things that this game is, and rightfully so. But I'm gonna have to go into some of the other things that, you know, might not be as much of a fan of. And honestly though, for this game, I'm kind of nitpicking, since there aren't really any major game killers to go along with this. One of the things I noticed pretty into the game was that matchmaking could be better. I mean, you would have teams of level 15s against 45s, and this is getting better as more players get familiar with the game in advance, but early on it was just a really significant problem. I think it's going to iron itself out, and honestly, I'm not really seeing it as much as I used to. Second biggest problem, this game is demanding, and I mean, it's very demanding. Uh, if you're using it for PC, you're going to need kind of a good build to run it on and lots of space. I mean, it's like 50 gigs. Uh, your average laptop will probably struggle with this game, but that being said, you don't need top of the line. So if you have something you're confident with, that's good. Uh, if you're getting it for like an Xbox One, you should be set since it's based off of a strict system. Another really minor thing is you can jump into the game from the get-go, but 
it takes a little while to really grasp this game. I mean, I know that might sound like a duh with a new game that you have to get used to it, but this game is kind of a new approach to things and something that I don't think we're really used to. So don't be surprised if for the first while, you know, you're not understanding why you're dying or what happened or where that guy came from. But I promise you, if you play it, you're going to have fun from the get-go, but you'll understand things more as you get into it. And it just takes a bit longer than an average shooter. But for me, the final, and I think the one of the more larger things about this game that is an other, I suppose, is that uh, Generations, which are this game's form of prestiges, basically, uh, they require challenges done after your second one. And I'm not a big fan of this for a few reasons that it kind of is forced gameplay upon us. It's saying, hey, if you want to continue doing this, you have to get 150 shotgun kills. You gotta, you know, get a bunch of sniper kills. And that shouldn't seem like an issue, but some of them, like from your 5th to 6th generation, you have to get pilot eject kills. So as people eject from their titans, you have to kill them in the air, and I don't remember how many you have to get exactly, but that is just a pain. If you don't recall, I mean, that's kind of a callback to uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, where you needed to get capture the flag points to get Marathon Pro. I mean, to me, I, in my opinion, play the game how you like it. You shouldn't have to play these certain weapons or characters just to level up more, and that's just my opinion, but it is what it is. So, what is my final verdict on this game? Well, I have to say, it is an amazing new game. It's like an oasis in the dry desert to whatever FPSs have become recently. I mean, it's exactly what you want. It's fun, it's simple, they get right to the point and don't waste your time with BS and other stuff. And I mean, it was the most anticipated game of the year for a reason. I, it earns all the praise it's been getting lately. So, on my scale of buy, rent, or pass, I'd say this game is a buy and full price if you can run it. I mean, this has been the first game I've bought since Skyrim, that like full price, and I don't regret it for a second. It's amazing, and that's just my opinion. If you're confident, you can run it on whatever system it is. Otherwise, you know, might want to wait and just see because otherwise it can be kind of hard to run. But anyways, thank you all for watching so much. Let me know, was this helpful to you? If you have any other opinions, let me know. All good, it's just my stuff. But I want to thank you all very much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and good titan hunting to all of you.